Hi, in this video I will identify the 64 bones of the upper limbs and the 62 bones of the lower limbs. The appendicular skeleton shown in the green color in this illustration refers to the bones found within the limbs as well as the girdles that attach the limbs to the axial skeleton. The pectoral girdle includes the clavicle and the scapula. The clavicle, commonly known as the collarbone, is a medium-sized flat bone located on the anterior acromial region, and the clavicle contacts the sternum to form the only joint between the upper limb and the axial skeleton. Then the clavicle also contacts the scapula. So the scapula, commonly known as the shoulder blade, is the large, flat, triangular-shaped bone located on the posterior of the acromial region. And the scapula contacts the humerus to form the glenohumeral joint or the, the shoulder joint. So the humerus is the large long bone found in the brachial region that contacts the scapula to form the glenohumeral joint or shoulder joint. And that's on the proximal end of the humerus. The distal end of the humerus forms the elbow joint, also known as the humeral ulnar joint by contacting the ulna. There are two long bones found in the antebrachial region. The ulna is the medium-sized long bone in the medial antebrachial region that contacts the distal end of the humerus to form the elbow joint. The lateral long bone in the antebrachial region is known as the radius. In the carpal region, there are eight short bones known as the carpals. The carpals are organized into two rows of four. There's four proximal carpals known as the scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. And then there are four distal scapul, four distal carpals, which are known as the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. So while the proximal row of carpals contact the distal end of the radius, the distal row of carpals contact the metacarpals. The metacarpals are five long bones found in the manual region, in the, in the palmar region of the hand. And the distal end of each metacarpal contacts a phalange. The phalanges are the small long bones in the digital regions. The pollux contains just two phalanges, a proximal phalange and a distal phalange, whereas the other digits each have three phalanges, a proximal, middle, and distal. Now moving down to the lower limbs, the pelvic girdles are also known as the coxal bones, or more commonly, the hip bones. Each coxal bone is formed from three bones that fuse together. The superior region is known as the ilium, the inferior anterior region is known as the pubis, and the inferior posterior region is known as the ischium. All three of those bones fuse together to form each coxal bone, and there are two coxal bones, a right and a left. The coxal bones contact the sacrum to form the sacroiliac joint, the joint that's connecting the lower limb to the axial skeleton. Then the acetabulum is a socket, a indentation on the lateral aspect of the coxal bone that functions as the socket for the hip joint where the head of the femur will contact the coxal bone. 
The femur is the largest long bone in the body, and there are two femurs, one in the left thigh and one in the right thigh. So the thigh is also known as the femoral region and gets its name from the femur, the largest bone in the body. On the anterior, at the distal end of each femur, the patella is a sesamoid bone that's embedded in a tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle. And the patella functions to protect the anterior of the knee joint and also to redirect the force of the quadriceps muscles to enable extension of the knee joint when those muscles contract. In the crural region, commonly known as the leg, there are two long bones. The medial long bone in the crural region is known as the tibia. The tibia is the weight-bearing bone in the leg, whereas the lateral bone in the crural region is known as the fibula. And the fibula does not support the weight of our body, but the fibula does help to stabilize the ankle joint. Now we'll move on to the bones of the foot. There are seven tarsal bones in each foot, so 14 tarsal bones total. The talus is the most superior of the tarsal bones that contacts the tibia. The calcaneus is the largest of the tarsal bones. Then we have the cuboid on the lateral side, and on the medial side is the navicular, as well as three cuneiform bones, the lateral, intermediate, and medial cuneiform bones. The small long bones that are located in the pedal region contacting the tarsals are known as the metatarsals. So there are five metatarsals in each foot, 10 metatarsals total. And then there are 28 small long bones in the digital regions known as the phalanges. And similar to the phalanges in the manual digits, the phalanges in the pedal digits are proximal and distal in the hollux. And there's a proximal, a proximal middle and distal phalange in the other four of the pedal digits.